Hello, hi Catherine, fabulous. Hi. <clears throat> Hello. Hi everyone. Hi. Hello. How are you? Can you see me um, okay? You've just got Yes, I can hear you. you. Can you hear me? I can, yes. I can. Hi, Hello you. everybody. Hi everyone, I think people are joining in now. Um, we've got a few people joining us. How are you doing, Catherine? I like everybody else, uh, just getting through each and every day, I think, um, is the only way right now. But it's nice to see your face, Griselda, and it's nice to hear your voice. It seemed like such a long time ago that we were actually talking to each other and connecting in a normal way. And this is the new normal, isn't it? The new normal, the very strange new normal. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So what's the situation in your house? Are you fully in lockdown with the family? Yes, we are. So we have a blended family, so it's slightly different for us. Um, so I've got my 18-year-old back from university, which is brilliant because um, all of a sudden I have instant childcare, uh, which is great. And it's nice to have a home. Yeah. Uh, and she likes cooking and she likes baking. So, um, so that's helping me massively. Uh, we've had to create two separate workspaces at home. So we live in a three-story house. So my husband has taken over the lounge downstairs. So he's working from home. Yes. But doing a very much a full-time, you know, he's got to be at his desk at nine o'clock in the morning and he doesn't finish till, till five. Um, but he has a kind of job where it doesn't matter if he's doing Skype calls with a three-year-old playing in the background. Oh, fabulous. Um, so we've set his office up with like uh you know all the play stuff for christina who's three so that's working fine and i have created a little space uh in a bedroom two floors up um and that's how we're working and we've just had to adjust and find our way that works for us um and i've got a stepson who's uh nearly 16 and a stepdaughter who's who's 12 so they're coming on a daily basis um to come and stay with us as well so we're kind of trying to work as one household yeah um, as much as we possibly can so our house is full it seems Brilliant. like there's just a it's just a continuous loop of cooking washing up i know um, it just me, that was real it never stops but you know it's it's finding this new normal and what works for you and um you know, certainly for me, I've just got to the place where just working um, until lunchtime each day, but even working on a weekend works for me because, yes. um, you know, I need to spend some time with my daughter, yes. but I also need to find the time when she's at her most occupied and, um, and she's quiet. So, yeah, it's all different. But it's interesting, you know, because before all this, I was so constrained to... Um, certain days that I could work and time yeah. to work around childcare and all of a sudden I, I could work as much as I want now um, yeah, if I wanted yeah. to um, yeah. so yeah what about you what's happening in your house so my home is a bit different because Michael who works as an obstetrics doctor still has to work mm. so it's just me with the two kids a nine-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl and so Hard that's 24 seven really. Yes. Um, and, I'm, and I'm finding that the, the key is being really flexible and not being rigid about what needs to happen when, um, because three year olds don't follow our schedule. So not they want to play when they want to play and they're hungry when they're hungry. I mean, we have a normal day schedule where we have lunch and we wake up, a bit of breakfast, some homework activity. homework, some activity, and then we would normally go out into the garden and try and do something in the garden. So jumping rope, found that I really <laughs> like jumping rope. I'd forgotten how much I love jumping rope. And so I'm teaching my son to do some tricks with that. And then Ellie just plays around, my little three-year-old just plays around while we're doing that. And then when we come in, then I, I, I put the movie on for about an hour and a bit, and I try and catch up on work and emails then. Mm -hmm. um, and then the afternoon is very flexible because I know by then I am tired, they are tired. Um, and then we just do whatever they feel like. So it might be some games, Monopoly games, or it might just be just lounging. Mm -hmm. Because that's all you can do. 
you can and you've got to work to their routines as well yeah. haven't you? when you know when you're most effective when they're most effective um so it is it's it's a juggle and i think having spoken to to women who are in all sorts of different situations you know i think there's this assumption that you know if you haven't got children that you're in um, a situation where you've got all this time on your hands and and you know everything's okay but lots of people are in very different situations yeah. um you know and i think loneliness and isolation it it has an effect it has you know a different effect to not having lots of time and space or personal space yeah um, but the impact on your mental health you know is is still just as great so i think it's just being mindful about when we're talking about recognizing that everybody regardless of what situation they're in right now are struggling everybody's yes. situation yes. is different unique um so it's it's yeah just having that that compassion for other people yeah so i've spoken to single women or um people living with partners who have also had to go out and keep working because of um the outbreak and you find that they are also very lonely and they're looking at families thinking families have it all because they have people to engage with but mm. there's the flip side of that as well because you have people you're engaging with all the time yeah and i think that personal space that <laughs> lack of personal space hits you doesn't it so you yes. you're disconnected but you're very much connected with okay. um, the people in your house so i think finding some way to carve out some personal space and what we might have recognized as being personal space in the past might now be you know just being allowed to lie on your bed with the door shut um yes. for 20 minutes a an opportunity to to recalibrate to reset and just have some time where you're not constantly bombarded with um people needing things from you yeah and i think this is well for people like yourself and myself who are known to be strong mm. and seem to always have it all together all the time I think this is the time to really check in on people like us, um, the strong friends, the, the, the people who are always out giving and giving and giving because this is actually one of the worst times for them because they can bend themselves out just giving to others and not really refilling um, um, themselves on their energy, on their personal space. Um, so one of the things I've been telling people is please check in on your strong friends, check in on those people who always have it together because this is going to be a pretty tough time for them right now. What do you think about yeah, that? Absolutely. And I, I haven't had it all together at all. Um, I've gone through a raft of emotions. Yes. Um, my, the other day, my sister's partner passed away and um, I, that really hit me. And it, and it hit me because just the, the enormity of the fact that people are going through this and they're not able to say goodbye to the loved ones no. um, you can't give somebody who needs a hug a hug or any kind of physical comfort you can't get no. in the car and drive over you can't go to a funeral and i think you know we're, we are human i'm human um yes i i would say i have um good coping mechanisms but they don't they don't give me immunity they don't give you no, no. From feeling things i think you know we've got to we've got to be able to experience those emotions yeah. i want to be able to talk about those emotions and i do talk about those emotions um you know on my social platforms and things even with my clients and it's been really interesting these past couple of weeks because normally on a on a skype therapy session or we do it on zoom or whatever works for them um the first bit of conversation would be checking in with them you know how yes. they've been doing and it's interesting because my clients have started asking me how i am and it feels yes. a bit strange actually as a therapist for my clients to be saying to me how are you catherine um but it's really nice it's really it's nice, so for somebody nice. To yes. say, how are you doing um, yeah. how are you doing so you know i had to do that on wednesday i cancelled all of my therapy sessions i was supposed to be on uh, bbc radio on wednesday afternoon and i emailed everybody and said look i'm really struggling today yes. just processing through all of that emotion and i wouldn't be doing my job right if i was to hop on a call or come on the radio if somebody asked yes. me something i'd probably burst into tears yes. um so it's just about recognizing when we need to give ourselves some time and space that yes. 
you know, mental health days are still needed. Um, yeah. I'm going to be taking them. Um, there's times my family know when to avoid me because I just, honestly, I just, I shut down. And that's my, my time of saying, I just, I just need my mind to yeah. itself out and process what's in it. Um, but I'm not afraid to ask for it. And I think that's key that we often go through life, don't we, thinking and assuming that people know how we feel and mm -hmm. people can guess how we feel. Um, so I think even more so, particularly people who are there in a crisis and are strong for people, you've got to get comfortable with asking and telling yeah. people um, what it is that you need and don't yeah. wait to be given it, you know, say, yeah. this is what I need. Well, so I had to have a conversation with my husband because for him, everything is still normal because he's still working. It's just more intense and there's just more risk and more to learn, more training on how to cope with patients with COVID. But when he came home um, last week, I told I sat him down and I said, Mike, actually, you need to recognize that things have changed. So even though you're coming home and I'm keeping the home going as normal for the kids, you have to make time to give me space. So when you come in, can I just get an hour to go out for a walk? And that's just me carving out that space for me because I recognize that when I'm in the house, Immediately I'm in the house, the kids will want to be with me. They want to hug you and crawl all over you. So I've, I've made the point of leaving the house when he comes. And I remember doing that when my, I had my first son, my child, um, and he was very little. Every time Mike came back from work, I would either go into the bathroom and lock myself in it and have a, a long, slow bath and listen to music and put a candle on because I needed to center myself. Uh, and now that I can't really do that because they know how to get to the bathroom, even when yeah. they lost it, I'm just taken to going out and, and, and putting my mic uh, headphone on and going for a walk. Um, because I need that space. Otherwise, I'm going to burn out and the kids need me and my husband needs me. Um, not because he needs me to take care of him, but he needs me to keep the kids going so he can go out there and do what he does best and, and help us get past this crisis. Um, yeah, so it's more important than ever that you make the time and put yourself first in this equation so you can be more centered and more available to the others that depend on you. Yeah, um, you know, relationships is a really good point. The relationships, yeah. sometimes you really have to spell out what it is that you need. Um, there's a, a really good way of framing that in a conversation with uh, a loved one or somebody who yeah. you're trying to resolve something with. Um, and it's we call it the I message. It's in three parts. And it's very much saying, look, when you do this, whatever it is, it makes me feel. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Can you feel? Um can we not do this or could you not do this or could you yeah. perhaps do this in a different way and it's a really powerful way to deliver yeah. something that you need to somebody else without creating conflict without feeling like they're to blame yes. without um you know getting some resentment all mixed in with that and you can use that in the, in the workplace you can use that wherever but i think right now in uh homes across the nation where you're feeling you're starting to feel that resentment fester you're starting to feel that your needs aren't getting recognized you have got to take that and have those daily conversations without creating any conflict just be yes. very assertive in terms of of what you want to need um i've had clients this week who have had to go and sit and do their therapy sessions with me in their car with the headphones on in sat in the drive yeah um because there's no there's no personal space to be able to do that um, so there's lots of places if you're creative and if you don't have perhaps lots of people don't have outside space don't have gardens that are safe to, to for children to play in um, you know you've got to find somewhere where you are that you can create a space even if it's a corner in a room that you can just go and sit um, and have no distractions it's really really important to have that and certainly you know for your husband working in the NHS the things that he will be seeing, the decisions yeah. he will be making, um, he's got that in his head, hasn't he? And he's yeah. seeing this. Um, and there is a thing, you know, secondary trauma is, is yeah. a thing of, of that happening. So there's something on you there, Griselda, about, you know, you being very supportive of that and giving him the space that he needs when he finishes work yeah. um, to work through some of that. So I think all these things that we take for granted in our relationships, how we communicate, how we work as a team, um, having some re really clear boundaries, um, even more important as we're, we're working through this. Yeah.
So just for anyone who is joining us now or going to watch this afterwards, um, this is just a teaser to a longer webinar we'll be having on the 26th of May on the Forward Ladies website. And so you can head over there and, and sign up for that webinar as well. So that will be from 12.30 to 1.30. And one of the things we're doing as a community of women is to hold these weekly quarantine well-being sessions um, because we recognize that it's a very challenging time for women mentally, physically, and psychologically. And more often we get the chance to wear the different hats we wear in our lives at different times and in different spaces. But all of a sudden we are needing to wear all of our hats in the same, on this, in the same time, in the same places without having any break at all. And we just wanted to bring um, experts and members like Catherine Asta, um, who are renowned for the work they do, um, supporting women um, with their life, with their challenges, with, with their mental health, so they can come and share these tips with us. So I, I expect a lot of you will probably be lying in bed right now, or you may be out already if you have little ones, um, to just be able to log in and, and join us in this conversation. So if you have any questions at all, there's a comment box at the bottom. You can just type those in and then Catherine and I will just um, take the time to answer some of these questions for you. And yeah. if you can also share on your platforms as well, because sometimes I do these sessions and I think, oh, that was absolutely amazing. This will be so helpful to so many people, but we don't have enough people joining in these calls. So if you know we are doing something fabulous and you joined us and enjoyed it, please just um, tag somebody in and invite a colleague and a friend and sister to join you next time. Yeah. And there's so much that we could talk about. There really is. Um, it's endless. Uh, and I never expected as a psychotherapist that, you know, I would be helping women through what is, uh, I'm calling it anticipatory grief. Um, yes. So many women are feeling a loss right now. A loss on so many levels um, of all the things that you've just talked about. And typically people who suffer with anxiety would talk about this feeling and we'll talk about a feeling of a sense of dread of waking up with a you know the fear in the pit of the stomach always thinking in the future that something bad's going to happen oh the worst is going to happen yeah and what i'm finding is that women who typically don't suffer with anxiety disorders are experiencing anxiety and they've yeah. got this fear and it's an impending it's an impending fear. It's something, an impending loss that's going to happen and you can feel it and you know that something is going to happen and, and we're waiting for it. Um, and what I'm seeing is, you know, a range of emotions. There are lots of people getting very angry. There are lots of people who are still yes. in denial. Um, there's people who are starting to bargain a little bit who are saying, well, if I, you know, if I do this and self-isolate for the next couple of months, you know, we might get to the stage where things are okay. And that's settling that in their heads. Um, but there's also feelings of overwhelm, of hopelessness, yes. um, of, of, you know, deep sadness. And yes. it's, it's, it's just incredible, honestly, to be in the minds of women who ordinarily would not be experiencing these things. Um, and who are all experiencing it. And I think there's this assumption, isn't there, that we're all, we're all at home, we're all working from home, we've all got this time on our hands, we're all plotting <laughs> and planning our next, our next goal and long-term uh, thing that we're going to be doing. And we're not working from home. No. We, are, we are at home. Yes. And, and we're working through the, the depths of a crisis right now. And yeah that makes you feel exhausted. I don't know about you, but, you know, waking up each day and nothing changing and it's very much the same each day. It, it takes a huge amount of mental energy and resilience to get yourself through each day. Yeah. Um, and that's all you can do really is, is work through each and every day as you're waking up. I deal with what you can deal with, deal with what you know. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody can give us any certainty um, no. what's going to happen. And the only thing, and I say this to all my clients, the only thing that we know for sure in life is that the only thing that is constant is change. Um, and we have got to get comfortable with that change. We've got to get comfortable with this notion that we don't know what's going to happen. Um, 
but our minds are busy behind the scenes trying to work out what is going to happen. You know, when are my kids going to go back to school? When is my business going to be back to normal? normal. Um, where am I going to get the money from to pay my bills next month? Um, you know, very, very real things. And we're working at a thousand miles an hour in our head, trying to make these assumptions. Yeah. And they're not there. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's about control, isn't it? Because we wake up and prior to COVID-19, we were in control of a lot of things that happened to us. So you chose to go out. You chose what to eat for lunch and what not to eat. Um, you chose what programs to watch, whether you wanted to go out and watch a live program. But all that choice is been taken away. And mm. so a lot of us are struggling with that loss of control and the loss of choice. But one of the things I teach, so we deliver a leadership program globally, and one of the things we spend a lot of time telling people to recognize is that you do not focus on the things that you cannot control because that is out of your control and that is energy that is just wasted because you couldn't change that outcome but you have to focus on the things that you can control and um, so even though you don't have um uh, plain flour to bake you still might be able to find some other kind of flour which you could then use to do some other kind of recipe so it's really just focusing on the things that you can control and i found that for myself I've needed to focus on that. So probably I've gone from, I, I was already a bit of a control freak, but I've now become even more controlling because the things that are within my control, I want to make sure that I am, I am doing them in the way that I want to do. But there's one other thing that you've touched on, Catherine, that I just wanted to, to talk about, which is mm. the, how tiring it is mm. to just be sat in the house trying to figure out, work out what to do next. And um, because before um, the lockdown started, I had this grand plan and I said, I have a book that I'm almost 80% done on. I'm going to work on this book every single day. And by the time the quarantine is over, my book will be ready to publish. Now ask me, Catherine, if I've spent a single day on this book. No, and, and I don't happened. expect that you will have done. Um, and I think this is a really good lesson in all of this, is that we have got to lower our expectations of what's achievable. Um, yes. That the output that we used to have before all of this happened yes. is not the same. Um, no. You know, for many women, they are, you know, they're now school teacher, nursery teacher, childminder, you know, chef, cleaner. Playmate. Yeah, everything. And everything. The, that whole emotional load. But even without those things, you've got time on your hands, perhaps, where you're on your own, you're isolated, you're feeling lonely. How do you manage that time? Um, even normal things like going to the supermarket once a week has become, it's become something to almost That's fear. It's, it's like going into battle because, yeah. you know, you see the queues outside the supermarket everybody's staying away from each other you know people aren't smiling at each other um there's empty shelves and and it's all these things that we took for for granted that were part of our normal day to day that we've really got to put some thought and effort into we've got to put thought and effort into how you're going to entertain your three-year-old and your and your five-year-old for you know 12 13 hours a day a day it's a lot. So to think that you're then going to have the headspace with Elder to sit down <laughs> and write a book, um, it's just, it's just not it's going to happen. And I think, you know, you just need to take this time, don't you, to, to yeah. do what you need to do. And the most important thing right now is keeping your family together, yes. um, is looking after your children, supporting yeah. your husband and, you know, his frontline work and what he's doing yeah. in the NHS and managing your business and, and yes. forward ladies and, and offering that support and doing things like this um, is a brilliant way to do that. And I think there's this, there's this pressure, isn't there, that we've all got to show up and we've got to be creating content every day and going on lives every day and doing all of this and, and we just can't. And, no, you can't. You can't. can't even going on this live because normally when you're out of the house every day, my hair is always done, and mm. I, I, you know, I don't think about it because I have to do the school run. So I put myself in a place where I'm ready to do that. Now, when you're home all the time, you don't have to comb your hair. 
You don't need to put makeup on. And you really do start to look like the way God intended us all to look. Mm. <laughs> like we were in the Garden of Eden. And, and then so even going on camera and doing all these things, you're like, oh my God, I have to actually put makeup on. I have to try and put my hair in some kind of order. And, yeah. and it's, it's not as, it does, it takes a lot more energy to do. But, but one yeah. of the reasons why I am committed to doing these things, even though they feel like, oh, it's a, it's a lot of hassle and why do I really need to do it? I'm doing that for my mental well-being and for my mental health because I find that it gives me something to look forward to, something to prepare for. And actually, the most important thing I have found is to keep moving, to keep moving towards something. Um, so then this gives me that goalpost to keep moving towards. Yeah. Uh, I think when you wake up and you don't move at all, you're just sat in bed, you're just sat on the sofa, because there are days when you need that. But mm. when that carries on for too long, I think then you get into a situation where it's much harder to then snap out of it. Yeah, and I think, you know, you've got to do what works for you, haven't you? And um, I know for me, every day I'm waking up and I'm doing um, online therapy. So yeah. there is no way I'm not going to turn up looking professional and yes. putting... <laughs> you know my lipstick on and wearing something bright and colorful because that's me and that's who I am and yeah. that's helping me right now yes. that's not to say that as soon as I finished work my hoodie's not going on and I've not got my trainers on to go for a walk in the afternoon um but I'm finding that having some distinction of of days and time is actually really helping and there's lots out there there's loads of, of articles from people who have faced isolation people who have you know yes. who have had lots of time on their hands and how have they coped with that people who um have had those liberties taken away and and what yeah. they say is that you have to make a distinction between the days of the week and day and night so you know treat weekends have a slower have weekend, weekend. Yes. you know cook something nice that you would normally yeah. do um bring your duvet downstairs and watch netflix all day um but do something different to what you're doing monday to friday try and snap out that routine and certainly you know for those of us who have children um children are so used and so ingrained to this monday to friday yes night or three routine and weekends of, of having some time Pleasure. So, yeah. You know, if you can try and take some control over your day to day and create your own routine, whatever that looks like for you, but it gives you some distinction between, you know, just staying in your pajamas all day and not getting out of bed. Um, do something, do something that's proactive. And and there's also something about I know you were talking about your book and that you thought you'd be writing every day. Um, but don't lose sight of that because there is going to come a point when we come out of this current situation and your book is going to get written. You are going to finish your PhD. You are going to be back on an airplane doing some global <laughs> tour somewhere. It's going to happen. So, you know, hold on to that feeling that, you know, that there is an end in sight to all of this, have some hope. Um, you know, don't feel like where you are right now is where you're always going to be. Cause that that's not the case, but I'm not saying, you know, be, doing lots around your long-term goals, but just, just have that, that that is going to come back at some point. Um, don't lose sight of that. Yeah, so I have actually found a, a, a couple of Instagram accounts that I've really enjoyed following. Mm. So um, so they, they give me some structures in the day to the night and um, and uh, what, what whatever feeling I'm having. So Amy Cuddy, um, who wrote the book on presence, and I actually recommend her book and, and, and her TED Talk for a lot of people. She does a, a daily writing hour where she brings all these renowned authors in um, mm. to share tips around their writing. So even though I haven't been writing myself every day, I've been writing other things, but not the book. Um, I've been joining those daily writing um, hours and I found them invaluable. So if there's anybody on this call who is trying to write, um, I would really recommend that. And then there is D9, so D-N-I-C-E, who does club quarantine. So it's like a proper club feeling um, mm. with music that takes you way back um, to different chapters of your life. So I've been logging into that and having a, a dance session um, with the family so i found those really really invaluable as well and, and so i've been even though i you know i can't do all the things in the way that i wanted them to happen i still i'm making a lot of progress every yeah. day and and i find that the as we 
carry on with this quarantine. I'm actually feeling more normal. It's mm. becoming more normal as the days progress. Um, yeah, because we're adjusting to it. But you know, you're going to be learning throughout all of this. So yes. you're going to be putting things in your book of things that you've learned. So you Absolutely. Know, you have a post-it note wall or a journal that you can just jot something down. I'm finding it really helpful every time I go on the radio and I'm talking about something um to do with this that obviously do lots of prep when you go on live radio so lots of notes i'm probably up to about 20 pages of notes at the moment of things that i've been talking about and i'm not going to do anything with them right now they're helping me no, yep. some content but when we come out of this there will be lessons in all of that there'll be yep. lessons that you can apply to other parts of your life about how we cope resilience um how we deal with anxiety and how different people cope and yeah just been in the minds of of women who you know in in normal circumstances would not be feeling the way that they are but they've been they've been immersed into this and to understand what their coping mechanisms are and how strong their mindsets are and how they're getting through this is has been so insightful yeah so we were only supposed to do this for 20 minutes but i i yeah. know we've gone over 30 minutes um so just if you're joining us now this is a precursor to a longer session on the 26th of may at 12 30 um if you head over to the four ladies website you will find a link um on the what's going on page so you can then sign up so thank you all so much for for joining us thank you so much catherine you're um, for also making time for us i know it's you know time even though we have time on our hands it's never been even more precious mm. um because we, there's always a trade-off uh, for us to make and, and just before we sign off do you have any one thing to add to tell people who are joining us today yeah i would say that it's it's okay to be feeling the way that you're feeling um it really really is you're going to be processing lots of different emotions um and they might change on a day-to-day -day basis but it's okay you know this is a time to show um that your vulnerability that there's there's no shame in that at all no absolutely not um and talk talk to people in your house pick up the phone um you know stay connected to people and just tell people how you're feeling because there are lots of people out there who are there to help and support you um please don't feel like you are experiencing this entirely on your own because you're not alone in this we're all going through it yeah and and uh what i would like to end on is um i spoke to a lady earlier on um this week we had a session and she said i don't have a reason contact people i feel like i can't contact people anymore before when we were in the office i could just walk up to their desk or meet them in the kitchen or the coffee table and be able to have a conversation and i'm finding that i am not having a reason to contact them i need a reason to contact them and what i told her is that you don't need a reason to reach out to people to ask how they're doing um the biggest thing i've learned is throughout this covid lockdown is that your wealth really is in the people you have in your life mm. it's in the quality of the relationships that you have and if there's anything at all that we can spend our time investing in right now it's in you know building those relationships and reaching out to people so if you're on this call and you're you're thinking well i don't have anybody to reach out to and i don't really know what to say to them this is what you can do. This is what you can do to reach out to them. Just check in with people and say, I'm just wondering how you're doing. Just check in. That's all you need to say. And you'll be surprised how grateful people will be because you reached out to them to check in on them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as we all go through this, everybody's struggling. There's nobody who's too strong, who's got it all together. We're all in the same boat. I mean, from opera, opera's never experienced this feeling to um, Sheryl Sandberg, to whoever your, your role models are. They've all never experienced this before. This is a once in a lifetime, a once in a generation event that's happening right now. So let's take the time to really connect with the people around us. Yeah, no, that's really good advice. So thank you for asking me to come on, Griselda. Uh, thank you. Morning. And if anybody has any questions, you can always um, DM me if you yes. didn't get the opportunity or you didn't want to say it um, on a live. Uh, just drop me a DM over at Catherine Astor and I will get back to you. Okay, thank you so much. Have a thank wonderful you. day. Thank you. Let's thank keep you. moving. Bye. Bye. Bye.